Hey everyone, it's Jason from EskimoTV.net and today I'm going to be talking about Dexter New Blood Episode 5 Runaway. This review slash recap will contain spoilers and so if you haven't seen the episode or you do not wish any of the details to be spoiled, make sure you click away from this video and come back once you've seen it. I'm going to be starting off with what I thought was the biggest reveal and that is that Angela discovers that Jim Lindsay is actually Dexter Morgan and I'm sure she has a lot of questions like why? I did Dexter choose to start a new life and go under the name Jim? That is going to be an intense conversation, and I'm curious what Dexter is going to say when put on the spot. I'm sure he was not expecting to be confronted by that. I do have to say, what are the odds of Angela going to a convention, the same place where Dexter used to work. How do you think that Dexter's going to respond? I have yet to see the episode and so I'm really anticipating once I'm able to watch it. Other things that happened in this episode is Dexter tries to be friend Harrison, let him know that it's okay, but Harrison has a big guard and is not going to let him know what really went down. At least we, as an audience, are led to believe that Harrison really did commit this crime against Ethan. While the whole town believes Harrison's a hero, Dexter confronts him and really is trying to get out of him. Hey, why did you kill this guy? And it's okay if you did. Harrison is not breaking down. Or maybe he didn't kill Ethan. Maybe Dexter, after being rusty, analyzed things the wrong way. I'm certainly leaning towards the fact that Harrison may have committed this crime. Curious what y'all think about that as well but Harrison ends up going to a party where he ends up taking a really heavy substance that ends up contributing to the fact that Aunt Angela discovers Dexter's identity. Harrison before blacking out reveals to Audrey Angela's daughter that Jim Lindsay isn't Dexter's real name. So that in conjunction with what Angela learned at this convention she was at was able to piece together and discover Dexter Morgan's obituary. I wonder if Bautista is going to find out if she's going to talk to him or tell him that, hey, that guy Dexter, he's still alive. I'm curious how that all will play out. Other noteworthy things that happened is we for sure have confirmation that Kurt is the creepy dude who's taking away these girls and I'm not sure why. His behavior is very bizarre when the girls try to, or when this particular girl in this episode tries to elicit a response that's a sexual response to hopefully try to flee, he gets real frustrated. And another odd behavior is when he says, you can go run. Um, she doesn't run. I think she knows that she's gonna be shot at this point. So she decides to try to run up to him and he ends up shooting her in the eye. I'm very confused with his behavior, why he said this isn't the way it was supposed to be. What did he want to happen instead? Did he just want to shoot her from a distance? Did he feel bad uh, because he shot her up close or because she was struggling? I'm not exactly too sure on that. Curious as to what Kurt's goal is, but that is definitely something that uh, was a big reveal. Angela and Molly Park also discover that Matt that's been using his cards for a hotel is not the Matt that they are looking for. They are able to sway the security to let them look at the security footage. Angela lies, not sure quite why, maybe just to not have the people at the hotel worried that uh, that's the guy they were looking for, but she knows and Molly knows that Kurt's lying now, and so I'm sure that there's gonna be some investigation around that, and there may be some reveals as to what the heck he's doing with these girls. Who knows, but Angela has a lot on her plate. I feel really bad for her. She's having to worry about what happened to Matt, why Kurt's lying. She just discovered that her boyfriend has a completely different identity, a past, and is certainly wondering what he did or why he decided to move away and start a new life. 
uh, as Mrs. Puff and SpongeBob does, and then, you know, she says, <laughs> not again. Uh, anyway, I don't know, I like SpongeBob. Couple other things that happen with the drug-related people. Uh, Dexter plans to kill Miles, and when the police very untimely show up after Dexter's injected him with the uh, anesthetic or whatever thing he puts in them to knock them out, uh, he says, time to resort to plan B, and uh, pretends it to be a uh, slight beat up uh, fight that is just a scuffle. Um, definitely the officer uh, would have been alarmed to learn what Dexter truly planned to do. But I think it's a bit odd that after this scene of events, he learns that a man named Jasper Hodge is responsible for distributing these heavy drugs that were taken at this party. And he goes to this guy's house to kill him. And it seems a bit undextery to me. Dexter's supposed to be this very smart, intelligent, sleek serial killer, yet he's killing this dude at his house knowing that it's on the police's agenda to visit Jasper Hodge to potentially question him about all this drug use. Maybe Dexter thought that they weren't gonna do it right away, but it just seems a bit of a risk for him to do this. And sure enough, the police come. I know this whole season we've use the phrase Dexter's rusty, but this just seemed another thing, really big thing to add to the list. In addition to him just, what what's his luck today? Really bad. Him trying to take out Miles as well. So the police invade Jasper's home and Dexter has to make it look like an overdose. And so overall, this was a really great episode. It has us in, oh, what the crap, mode thinking what's Angela gonna do is Harrison going to unveil some of the things that he struggles with or some of the things he's not revealing to Dexter uh, is Dexter gonna run away and how is this going to result in the conclusion of this series I'm not exactly quite sure but I would love to know your thoughts. I think that there's so many possibilities, it would be really hard for me to predict anything substantial or anything I would feel confident in saying. Those are my thoughts on Dexter New Blood Episode 5. I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you did, smash that like button. You can also consider subscribing to the channel where you'll find weekly reviews for Dexter New Blood posted on the day that the episode releases. You can also, if you like movies, you can check out the rest of the channel for movie reviews, home entertainment, music, unboxing videos. You can also check out my website, EskimoTV.net, for more reviews for myself as well as other authors. It's been a pleasure talking with you all. Once again, my name is Jason Escamilla from EskimoTV.net.